And then I spot them. What? Oh, could it be? Tell me, is it? The color's right. The look is right. The feel is right. on my way to Goodwill and I've never actually well I can't say never but for the last I'm gonna say at least five years I have never gone on a Sunday morning so I don't know what to expect and the reason is because I'm I'm usually at church but our church is online now so I can catch up on church this afternoon uh, so I'm going to venture and hit them right when they open this morning and see what I can find. As opposed to the last video I did was right before they closed. I'm kind of doing a little comparison. But I wanted to address something really quick. So I'm getting called out on complaining about prices. I just want to clear this up. Yes, it does drive me a little bit batty when I see things things priced at full eBay or retail pricing at a thrift store. And here is why. As I tell all of those that I work with on building their eBay and their online business, you have to know who your customer is. And Goodwill's customer is not the person who is shopping on eBay to get something for their collection at full price. Doesn't mean that customer won't walk in the door. Doesn't mean that customer won't walk into your online shop. But you need to price for the majority of the demographic. And we know people shop at thrift stores, one, because they can't afford to go buy full retail, two, because they're resellers looking to find things that they can flip and make a profit. And there is absolutely nothing wrong with that. We are, and I say we, because I include myself in this, we are single moms. We are single dads. We are retired people trying to live on social security. We are people who are out of work because of the craziness of 2020. And reselling is one of the ways that we can put food on the table and pay our rent. And so those thrift stores are doing a great service by offering those used products where they have zero cost of goods. It costs them nothing. It's donated, all right? It's not like a retail store that has to mark up from what they paid for the item. Well, we're like the retail store that has to mark up what we paid for the item. So yeah, we need to make a healthy profit to account for all the expenses that go into running an online business. There is shipping materials. There is ink and paper. There is time. Time, 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 time. And that's probably like one of my biggest things. So at Goodwill, they're red tagging things. And I was told by an employee, those red tags are things they looked up. Okay, great. You looked it up. Well, I know a lot of you have struggled with looking up things that you're actually selling online, that you are doing this as a business. You spend hours on research. So I know some person in the back of a thrift store is pulling up an eBay listing and go, oh, look, somebody's got this listed for $25. Let's price it at 20. That's not how it should be done. So when I complain about the prices, it's because they are not realizing who their customer is. It is the reseller. It is the low income person looking for something and they should price accordingly and stop trying to get full eBay pricing. Hey, pull the good stuff. I, you know what? It's their business. They can do that. They're employing people to do that. I know there was another YouTuber did a recent video on that whole side of Goodwill and it didn't get taken very well. I personally, more power to them because now they're doing the same work that we do. But the stuff that they put on the shelf, cut us some slack. 
price it so we can make some money too. And it's all good. You're going to sell a bunch, not have to throw it in a dumpster like we saw in one of my other videos. So that's just my little editorial on that whole side of the thrift business. Oh, and just so you know, I've actually managed a thrift store. I am fully aware of how things come in, how much junk you have to process through. But once it gets on the shelf, it's already been sorted. It's already been processed through and priced. So these are the items I'm talking about. Breaking stuff in the back, that's going to happen because I'm sure there's a lot of stuff that comes in broken. So I actually, I'm, I'm okay with that too. Okay, I think I will dismount this little high horse I got on for a moment. And let's just go in and shop and see what we can find. And I'll try not to complain. All right, let's go. Well, we are just not even going to mess around with trying to fight the Goodwill music on this one. So voiceover it is. I bypassed the Halloween shelves and went straight to the Nicky Nacky stuff. And they just had a big red tag sale yesterday. So the shelves are pretty wiped out, actually. I thought for a minute this was a Thomas Kincaid. It is not. Um... And I don't remember what the price of that was. Th these do sell, well, I shouldn't say they sell. I should say they're listed for about $25. This is a little nut dish. I suspect it is a Nippon or made in Japan. Uh, it's only $2.99. So I'm going to go ahead and grab this because it is nice. This cracked me up. Now, this is totally vintage. I remember doing this kind of like, I forget what it's called. It's not, is it decoupage? Anyway, the trolls and the fact it was from Savers and it's gone to Goodwill. But come on, that baby troll laying there in the corner. Adorbs. So going back, I spot these little tiki shot glasses from the Whalers. They're only a dollar each, so I am picking those up as well. I like those kind of prices. I like the fish. I noticed the fish did have a tag, but they have covered it up with the label, a pet peeve of mine. More on that later. <laughs> I love the color of this blue, but I, it just didn't really have a whole lot of function. This was an interesting piece that is by Heartstone. USA is what it says there on the back. Took me a minute to figure it out. Um, I could not find this particular piece. I'm calling it a bunt pan, but I don't know if that's what it is. Maybe not. Maybe it's some kind of little Cornish hen roaster. It's not big enough for a chicken, so I don't know. This is candle wick, and when they have a little handle like this, it's known as a nappy. They don't sell for too much anymore, sadly. It used to be a really, really hot seller. But then right next to it, I spot a Mary Gregory, at least Mary Gregory style, pitcher. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and grab this, even though it's 7 bucks. See, I'm okay with that. This is a nicer piece. I can do quite well with that piece, even at $7. I'm still on this first shelf. I can't quite... Even get past here, I'm finding good stuff already. This is a little home project leaf. Another piece of candle wick is what I'm pointing out there. So probably they, they had a collection of it come in. This is lucite or acrylic. I do believe it's quite vintage and it has a tree. And now the tree is part of the logo for the niche foundation that I run, so I went ahead and grabbed this up. Uh, there's some well, there's something you don't see every day, and I'm not exactly sure what its purpose is other than just a decoration, but it's from Ross, and um, yeah, we'll just leave that right there. They've got baskets on top, and then I spot this is a doll. Now this is known as Gofun. G-O-F-U-N. Um, it's got some really nice qualities to it. You can see the glass eyes and the detail, but there is damage on that cheek. 
And because of that, that $7.99 price tag is a bit too high. Probably wouldn't be too high if it didn't have that damage. Not sure what did that say? Ah, till it, see, I have slow down. Look at messing myself up. <laughs> Usually these little egg vases are made by, I want to say, Lefton. I don't know. Jeffrey over at Nifty Vintage deals with those a lot. I grabbed this piece of art glass just because it's really eye appealing. It is not Murano. It is not even old, I don't believe. It's contemporary. But it has a really nice look. So even down at the booth, that's an easy $10 to $15. And it's red and it's Christmas time. I'm not sure what the maker on this is. It's just the initial B and there was two of these. So if you know that maker, that mark, I would love to know. Maybe I should have picked them up, but I did not. I thought these were super cute. They're made by Anesco little ducks, but there was only three of them. So I did leave those behind. And this is a, another home project piece, a hobbyist piece, we like to call that. This had a little bit of a Fitz and Floyd look to it, but it was Aspen production. I thought he was glass for a minute, but he wasn't, and I couldn't read the label. This is actually, believe it or not, a Campbell's Soup kid in uh in uh, cupid must, they must have had a series that was like the months and that must have been february and now looking these up yes there are several of them listed but there are absolutely no solds in the last 90 days and a very exotic turkey be grateful i am i'm super grateful I love being able to do this for a living. I can't even begin to tell you, and I hope I can help some of you do this for a living too. This actually had soap in it, and uh, yep, I rattled it. The soap is in there. I did not open it. I spotted this and was super excited. I have sold these in the past, but I cannot remember what they are called. There are 10 of them in here, all different animals, but $15 and I'm pretty sure that is too much for me to spend for resale on these little critters unfortunately and they didn't sell on their half price sale day either keep that in mind this print caught my eye because I have a thing for giraffes I was part of the whole um, giraffe watch 2017 when April the giraffe was pregnant and we were all waiting for her to give birth on live stream. Yeah, I was one of those. So this was $24.97 in the store, and you can see they've got it priced pretty close to that now. Now that is a great price if you are buying this for your own home, but for resale, just can't pay those prices. And again, on the pricing, I'm okay with that if they actually sell it. But what is happening is things are just ending up in the landfill. And that's the part that I have a problem with. Not that they're pricing things and hoping to get really good money. Hey, they're in business. I get it. They've got expenses. But I don't want to see stuff end up in the landfill that doesn't have to go there. So kind of looking over the metal shelves and not seeing too much today. It's pretty pretty sparse it was a little interesting piece of art but I could tell it was very new a lot of stuff comes out of like you know Ross and TJ Maxx and home goods and all those places now I wasn't sure what this was when I first picked it up and then I'm like oh it just hangs on the wall and it's just a flower hanging on the wall this kind of cracked me up because I actually think I donated these a while back now why they're just now showing up I don't know oh hey remember I bought some of these at the community yard sale they're in that video and so I know what this guy is even though there's no marks on him so I went ahead and put him in my cart to see what they would sell him to me for 
They let me have them for $1.99. These were interesting, but when I picked it up, it was super lightweight. I expected it to have a little weight to it. And what I know is that softwood is not as hard to carve as hardwoods and therefore the value is not as great. There, little tidbit for today. This is a little home project of a kitty made in 1998, but uh, we are going to leave the kitty for somebody else today. I'm like a kid. I have to touch and look at everything. I don't know if you've noticed that. It's probably why I rarely took my kids shopping with me when they were little, because I did not want them to uh, touch everything. Remember? Like we will, we all say, look, but don't touch. Oh no, Danny has to touch. <laughs> I wasn't sure what this was. Oh, it's some kind of a stamp. That's what it is. And they're initials. I don't know. If I, I don't know what initial that was. <laughs> we'll see what was underneath the monkey. Okay, we are on to the vases. And nothing's drawing me from the clear. Nothing's really drawing me from any of it. Any of it. It's pretty wiped out. It's possible there was good stuff here the day before. And then they had the big sale, but right now, it's pretty blah. It's pretty blah. They did have some flowers, and you know, I like my fake flowers. I took a look, but these were pretty worn, faded, a little dirty. I mean, they had them priced at $3.99, which isn't a bad price, but uh, they were just not usable for what I use the fake flowers for. But I did spot these feather kind of ones here and I did go ahead and grab those and then I needed some greens and these are new in the package so even though they were a little more than I'd like to spend I need them and I grabbed them And I was looking at the foam block that I use a lot of, but these were so mushed and they were pretty much retail price. And these were just pieces of leaves. So there. On to the mugs. Nothing here. Lots of stuff like piled. It looks like they didn't really clean up the store from the night before. And I know now as I'm doing the voiceover, I didn't know at the time, but apparently it was quite zoo like they said the day before during the sale so um, they had quite the crowd of people which is why I don't go to sale days and I it, that's a thing that has always been for me it's not something new with uh, what's going on with cousin Rona it's a thing that has always been my thing I do not like crowds because I don't like germs I've always been aware of germs so that yeah. Just a little aside, <laughs> I'm like, a little thing you didn't know about Danny, um, but I'm okay actually paying a little bit more for things rather than going and fighting the crowds. I was checking out the Kentucky Derby glass. You know, some of these back from the 70s can be worth quite a bit of money if you get the right horse, the right year, which is like 72, 73, those were the really good years. Uh, this was a 2001, so not as great of a year. I like this little set. It had a nice look, but you can see that it's just not very high end. Those are actually like decals. They call them transfers. It's not painted. And so um, everything was priced separately. That was a leave behind. Now we're looking through the glasses for something to jump out. Nothing's jumping out. Nothing. Still nothing. Until I wanted to just let you know, you've seen me pick these up before and I'm not picking them up these time because I haven't sold the ones that I have yet. So I don't pick up more until I've sold what I have. Now, here is a perfect example of the pricing with the red tags. It says Bohemia, Czech Republic. It is a plain wine glass, 
plain. Granted, it's new in the box. That's great. But let's just take a look at what these are going for and how they came about their pricing. This is a screenshot I took in the store when I scanned that barcode, and I'm sure they did the same thing and came up with a $15.95 price, so $10 seemed cheap to them. But that's not what they're selling for. And these are cute. I have seen these in the green. They are from Germany. The green is quite common. The cobalt blue is not so much. So the price was right on these. A dollar each, I'll take them. I want to learn a little bit more about the cobalt blue ones. Just scanning through. Not seeing anything else that I need to put in my cart today. It's had a nice look to it, but it's actually modern, not EAPG. And I could tell that by the feel of it and the weight of it. Now this, this is hilarious. Um, I, you got to love it. Come on. This, this is a white elephant type gift if I ever saw one. It is the perfect time of year to put this up for sale. It even has a moonshine recipe on it. Um, don't worry about whatever that number was on the bottom because... That can get scratched out. That might have been what it was, was being sold for back in probably the 1970s is where I'm, I'm assuming that was from. This is not a signed piece, pretty colors, but again, it's just a cheaply made piece of pottery. And a lot of this, you've got to feel it. That's how you're going to be able to tell the difference between quality and not so quality. And this is a Disney mug by Spell. It is Cinderella. And it actually sells for about $20 to $25. So even though it was $3.99, I picked it up. These plates really had my attention. They had them rubber banded together. They're oven proof, dinnerware, hand decorated, but it didn't say who made them. And it was $6.99 for three plates and a platter. It was the platter that I was actually the most interested in because you know how I feel about plates. I mean, I feel that way about platters too but the value was in the platter. Now, I could not find really anything. I did stop to look it up. I couldn't find anything that compelled me to want to buy those. And then I spot this, hand-painted Nippon. It is $6.99, and yep, that is a little high, but I understand the price. It is Nippon, it's in really good shape, and I've never seen whatever this is before, so curiosity makes me put this in the cart and bring it home so I can figure out what it's all about and I know I won't lose money because it's Nippon. And kind of looking along and these are some Franciscan saucers with a very, very modern Franciscan mark, so nope. And then I spot them. What? Oh, could it be? Tell me, is it? The color's right, the look is right, the feel is right. I do think I found some fire and light plates. Pretty sure, I'm pretty sure. Two of them for $1.99. And even if they don't end up being fire and light, they were only $1.99. So I can take that chance. And then there's just a little shelf of a bunch of pretties here, and they are all priced pretty high for what they are. These only sell for, you know, 10 to $15, and they are pricing them to where resellers cannot buy them. And other people obviously don't even want them for half price because <laughs> um, they were on sale yesterday. Now, I actually would have picked up this cup and saucer for $2.99, but each piece was priced at $2.99, which makes no sense to me when they put a couple of plates together for one price, but don't do a cup and saucer together. Come on, Goodwill. 
Now I look through every single aisle, even if it's stuff that usually doesn't harbor anything super good. I had to stop and take a look at this trivet that was so bright red. Holy moly. But then I spot this dish. Now I wrestled with whether or not to get this, not to have to ship it for sure, but just to put down at the booth. It's Los Angeles pottery. It is so 70s. Oh my goodness, that avocado green. Um, but I don't need any big stuff down at the booth right now. So I decided to leave that one behind for someone else. Now, if it's something that's going to sell for, you know, 50, 75, $100, I'm going to grab it. Okay, this is um, missing a piece. Actually, it's missing two pieces. It's Talavera. Beautiful cobalt blue. But there's not much I could do with these. I mean, the price is right. I'm sure somebody can repurpose these for something else. But for me, for resale, I'm going to take a pass on them. I had to take a peek at what the cupcake plates look like. And those are cute, but not a high resale value. Oh, I found it. I found the easy button. Oh, it doesn't work. Darn it. So I'm scanning this shelf and the only thing I see here of interest is this vintage enameled covered pot, which is not really my thing, but I had to look and see what they were selling it for, $7.99. So it's not even like, for me, it's not worth the risk and I'm, I don't even feel compelled to look it up. Okay, here's another perfect example. This is Kathy Zeeland. It is not a super high-end brand. This is used and they want $29.99. But look what it sells for, which tells me they're not really looking at what things sell for, just what they're listed for. This is a cheap piece of Chinese glass, $9.99. That's an okay price for someone to come in and buy it for their own home decor, but no resale value in that at that price. Actually, there's really, the shipping on that would be a monster, so don't even bother with stuff that big that is not excellent quality. So I've started looking at these throws, and this one felt like good quality, and I open it up, it's in sync, and I'm thinking, no way is this worth anything. But I decided to look it up, and it's actually worth about 30 bucks. And so the Northwest Company must be a good brand to look for. I found a couple of lamp shades that are vintage and matching and that's why I got them because I get a lot of lamps that I need shades for. So whenever I find matching ones, those are the ones I kind of grab up. Other than that, there is not much else up on this lamp shelf. Pretty sad looking today. But then look, oh my gosh. <laughs> How, how could it be that I find the pillow that goes with the in-sync throw? Now, it doesn't have a name on it, but it's the exact same image, and I'm going to sell it together with the throw, and boom. So here's the cart. Spent about $53 total, and um, have a goodly amount of stuff to go home and process. So we'll get to it on a haul. Well, I got a few interesting things there and found some great examples of what I was talking about at the beginning. I actually had an interesting conversation with the cashier who checked me out and discussing, we were talking about the tags. They get frustrated because people peel the tags and I was explaining to her, people peel the tags because they're putting the tags right on top of information that we need. She goes, well, I don't know anything about that. That's not my job. I can't say anything to the back. So this is really something that has to come from a corporate level and just be passed down as policy. Goodwill trains, I'm going to say thousands, if not tens of thousands, if not even higher than that, of people. And so they're very, very like, boom, boom, boom. This is how we do it. Procedures, routines. Um, so... Things need to be laid down from corporate, really. It's corporate who has to say, hey, make policy. Don't cover up the maker's mark. It's real simple. It would help the cashiers that we find out now. So maybe that's the way to go about it is your cashiers are frustrated because they can't scan the, the, the tickets, which is costing you time. Anyway, 
I could go off on another tangent. I'm not going to do that. I will probably talk more about this on my Monday live show at 1 p.m. Pacific time on Mondays. So subscribe and hit the notification bell so you know right when I go live. And with that, go be profitable and make it fun. And we'll see you on the next one. Bye.